Hello, I'm Brent Ferris from the Bearded Man Studios, and in this video we're going to go over caching inside of Forge Networking. So, caching is basically uh, a way of keeping data on the server in a key value storage. A key being a string, so we can say store this value 9 in this string test. And then clients are able to request that value from the server and the server will respond with it. So we're going to see a live example of that here and uh, check out how it works. So first I'm going to create me a scripts folder and I'm going to make a simple script called uh, let's call it try cache try cache I'm going to open up that script and yes okay so uh, instead of here what we're going to do is we need to set up uh, something for the server to save out a variable to cache and then something for a client to pull it so the cache is actually a static class, which means that we can call it from anywhere. So I'm going to make a uh, private void update. Notice I'd, I'm not going to derive from simple, mono, um, simple network mono behavior or network mono behavior, but I am going to be using beardedmanstudios.network. So I'm going to say if uh, input dot get key down, let's say key code dot s for save. Uh, if I am the server. So we're going to say, uh, so if I'm the server, I, I'm going to say if I press S, I'm just going to make the server press S here. And the client is going to press G for git. So if input.get key down, key code dot G, we're going to get. So if we're the server, we're going to save. And to save, we're going to say cache, which is just a static class. We can say cache set. And then in here, we can put our data type. The data types that are supported are all the available data types that Forge Networking supports. And for a list of those, let me just open up the website. So I've opened up the website. For a list of those, if we go over to the uh, documentation and we scroll down, we'll find the serializing fields and properties. So if we go into that one, inside of this, we actually have a list of all the available uh, types that can be serialized in Forge Networking. So any of these can be sent in cache. I'd like to also note that we have a text tutorial, and this is actually where we're going to place this video on caching inside of the intermediate using the cache system in here, which is going to go over uh, what we're basically going to go over now. So back inside of Unity, I'm going to set an integer and the integer's key is going to be test, and the value is going to be 9, not 8, 9. Okay. Now on the client, I'm going to get, whenever I press G, I'm going to get that value. So I'm going to say cache dot uh, request. We're, we're going to request an integer with the key test from the server. And then we can pass in our lambda expression, which basically is an inline function. So we're going to say that it returns an object x, which is uh, the value that comes back from the server. And instead of here, we're just going to log it out. Debug.log x is the value we get from the server. So again, this is how we're going to save it on the server. This is how we're going to get it from the server. If you're not used to Lambda expressions, I suggest looking up uh, on C Sharp how to do Lambda expressions. If you're uncomfortable with Lambda expressions, you can actually turn this into a function. So if we had a function uh, private void show and it took in an object obj we can actually pass show into our second argument so either one of these will work debug.log obj the uh, response from the server so this is all the code we need for uh, setting in uh, variables in cache and pulling them from cache so I'm going to jump over to unity now inside of Unity, I'm actually going to go to the Quick Start menu. Actually, first, I probably should save this scene out. I'm going to make a game object for caching, cache, and I'm going to save this scene into a folder called Scenes, and I'm going to call it Cache. So now that we have this cache object, I'm going to put the cache script on it. So cache, there's our try cache. I'm going to save the scene and then go to the menu. So now that I'm in the menu, I'm going to go to the canvas. And over here, inside of the scene name, which is going to load, we're going to load cache. Now that we've loaded in cache there, we're going to open up our build settings, go to our player settings, make sure that we have run and background on. 
We're going to add the current, which is the menu, and then we're going to add our cache scene here. So now that we have our menu and our cache scene, we are ready. I don't know why I closed that. We are ready to build. So I'm going to do build and run. Now that I've built, I'm going to just make this a windowed version so that I can have them both running over here. I'm going to start this as the server. So our uh, Forge Networking cache window here is going to be the server. Now that I'm in there, I'm going to press S because if you remember in our script, if the server presses S, it stores it into cache. Now I'm going to come over here and make it the client. So I'm going to press play, join server with IP, and I'm going to press G for git. And you'll notice that the client has received the number nine from the server. So that's how you use the caching system. Um, and uh, that's basically it. You can, you can store any kind of values and get them from the server. If you have any questions, please let us know, and we'll be, uh, we'll be happy to help. And if you think we can expand this system uh, even further, please feel free to give us our suggestions. So until next time, thanks for watching.